Hey there, Angular folks, it's Brian, back again this time with a feature fresh from the Angular Lab. Angular's experimental signal forms just landed, and we're going to migrate a real reactive form to this new model. Same UX, cleaner, truly reactive code. All right, let's check it out. First, let's take a look at the app that we'll be working on. It's a very basic signup form. When I click into the name field and then blur it, we see an error message letting us know that this field is required. Then when I focus and blur the email field, same thing. Also, while this form is invalid, the submit button appears disabled. Now let's add a valid name. Nice, the error message goes away. For the email, once we enter a value, the error message changes because now we have a value, but it's not a valid email address. But once we have the correct email format, that error goes away and the button becomes enabled. Now, currently this is all done using reactive forms, which are great, but the bummer is that they don't use signals, right? And this is why we want to switch over to signal-based forms. First though, let's look at the code to get a better understanding of how everything works currently. First, let's open the component type script. Here, we can see the form property that is composed with a form group. That's the classic reactive forms API. Inside of it, we have the name control. It expects a string and it's required. Then we have the email address control that also expects a string is also required and also has an email validator to make sure it's the valid format. That's why we got two different error messages depending on the state. Okay, now let's take a look at the template. At the top here, we have a class that is added based on the form's validity and touch state. That's how we get the red border when validation kicks in. Then we are using the form group directive to bind our form on this div that wraps our form controls. This wires the template to the Angular form group. Next, we can see the name field using the form control name directive and passing it the name control. Below that, we have the validation message that shows when the name control is invalid and touched. Pretty straightforward, right? Then we have the same for the email field. We have the input bound to the email address control. And then its validation shows when the control is invalid and touched as well. But the message is a little different. In this case, we need to show either the required message or the improper format message. That's why we saw the two different messages. And below all of this, we can see that our button gets a disabled class anytime that the form is not valid. So that's the before. Now let's switch this to signal-based forms. But before we change anything, it's really important to note here that signal forms are currently experimental. The API can and probably will still change because the team is iterating quickly, but it allows us to get a feel for what it will look like and help give feedback if needed. All that being said, use with caution in production. Also, you need Angular 21 or a compatible next build to access these features. Okay, time to see it all in action. Let's switch back over to the TypeScript. Here, we're going to migrate the form model to signals and validation to the new schema style. So the first thing we need to do is update the interface for the form object. Right now, it uses form control types. Let's switch these to plain strings. This is great because the data becomes a simple serializable object, perfect for signals. Now we can remove the entire form group and its controls. We won't need it anymore. Let's also remove the reactive forms module from the component imports array. Then we can remove all of the forms imports too. Okay, in classic reactive forms, your mental model is a tree of classes, form groups and form controls and you subscribe to observables to react to updates. With signal forms, the mental model shifts to a plain data object wrapped in a signal, your single source of truth for form values, 
a form wrapper that gives you field level signals for state, invalid, touched, errors, and value, and template bindings that read these signals directly. No observables, no form control name, and no form group wrapper. First, in the template, we'll be using a new control directive, so let's add it to the imports array. Then, I'll need to manually add the import for this because in StackBlitz, it doesn't recognize the first import from a new module sometimes. Okay, now let's add our new form logic. Let's start by adding a signal for the source of truth for form values. We'll type this using our updated interface, then we'll start with empty strings for both fields. This signal holds our form's current values as a plain object. Reading it gives us the latest values. The form layer will then keep this in sync with the actual inputs, so we don't manually set or subscribe to anything. So, in reactive forms, the source of truth is the form control and its internal state. In signal forms, it's our signalized data object. Now, let's create a property for our form. For this, we'll use the new form function from the signal forms module. This function will create a form wrapped around a given model. In our case, this is our model signal. Then, since we need some custom validation, we can pass this function a custom schema for our form. Inside of this callback is where we can add some custom configuration. First, let's add the new required function. Then, we can pass this function the name field. Then, we can also pass this function some options. In this case, we'll define the error message. So, this function sets the name field required and provides an error message associated with the required state. Now, let's add another for our email address field and let's add its error message too. Then, in the case of the email, we need to add an additional email format validator, right? Well, we can use the new email validator function for this. Same thing here, we pass it the email address control. Then, we add the error message for this error state too. Okay, that should be everything we need for this form. So now we're ready to switch over and update the logic in the template. So now, the form property is a signal, so we need to add parentheses to this property in the class binding. And both invalid and touched are signals now too. Now, with signal-based forms, we no longer have the need for the form group, so we can just remove that. Next, we used to need to access the controls object to access the specific control from a form, but not anymore, so both of these variables can be shortened. Now, for the name control here, we'll swap out the old form control name directive with our new control directive instead. Next, for the error message visibility class, these are all signals now. And for the error message, we'll just swap this out with the error message from the custom schema using the errors array and the message property for the name field. Then, we just need to do the same for the email field. We need to switch the form control name to the control directive. We need to update the class binding to use signals. And we can just simplify the whole error message display here with the string interpolated value of our error message using the errors array and the message property. Then. For the last piece, we just need to update to signals for the disabled class binding on the submit button. And then, just so we can better understand what's happening here, let's add the string interpolated output of our model signal here using the JSON pipe. This will help us understand how the form and the signal play together. We need to switch back to the TypeScript real quick and import the pipe too. Okay, that should be everything we need to make this a signal-based form and to be able to see and understand the result.
Let's save and try it out. Okay, let's click into the name field in Blur. Nice, we get the error message. Then let's do the same for the email address. Yep, still working there too. The button is still disabled as well, so, so far so good, right? Now let's add a name. Nice, the error goes away, and what's cool is that we can see the name property in our model object is properly kept in sync with what we type in the field. That's pretty cool, right? That's all happening thanks to the new signal-based form function. Then, when we update the email address field, we see the error message swap out, so that still works too. Then, once we enter a valid value, everything is updated and the button gets enabled. So, we've kept all the behavior one-to-one, -one, but the implementation is now signal native. No more form group or form control ceremony in the class, and our messages live next to the rules that trigger them. So we just migrated a real user-facing form from reactive forms to experimental signal forms with a simple data model, a clean schema with error messages, and tight, readable template bindings. And there's still a lot more that can be done. We can add custom validators. We can stack multiple errors at once. We can hook up form submission with the new form value as a signal and much more. All in all, this is a pretty big step forward and I'm really excited about it. If this helped, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and drop a comment to let me know how you're feeling about this change. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.